three billion years old. They have fathered generations. They have fed the oceans. And they have given us the air we breathe. Today, they may help us defend our planet from crisis. They are algae. green slime found in ponds, lakes and at the seashore may not look like science's answer to preserving our planet, but it's thanks to algae that life on Earth even exists. This tiny, single-celled organism provides the world with more than 50% of its oxygen as a byproduct of its energy cycle. However, as we continue to burn fossil fuels to run our cars, heat our homes and power industry, Concern is deepening over the long-term effects that huge amounts of CO2 may have on our atmosphere. Could it be that this ancient organism is the key to preserving our planet? Here, at the Centre for Process Innovation, scientists think it just might. Algae are um, essentially plants without roots or leaves and they covered a, cover a wide range of different organisms from bacteria right up to seaweed. The types of algae we tend to deal with um, at CPI tend to be microalgae, which are single-celled microorganisms. You can see algae all, all over the place, obviously seaweed at the, at the seashore, but, but certainly algae in ponds and lakes, red algae, green algae, we see these algal blooms. I'm sure most people have seen algae on their patios, um, which slip on, they will grow anywhere, where there's, where there's, essentially where there's water. Algae, um, like all plants, photosynthesise, so they, so they use sunlight as energy. They take up the CO2 from the atmosphere. They release oxygen, which is obviously good. Um, and, this, and this might be useful in mopping up the excess CO2 that we're putting into the, the atmosphere through, through pollution at the moment. Here at CPI's laboratories, they're looking to cultivate algae specifically for mopping up waste gas from industries such as power generation and manufacturing. CPI are trying to develop systems for growing large quantities of algae where we can, we can position that next to maybe power plants that are producing large quantities of CO2 and we can use that CO2 essentially to, to feed into the algae and, and get them essentially to, to eat it up. We tend to grow them in, in large uh, what we call bioreactors so a very concentrated system, similar to what we've got here. We illuminate the, the, the reactors with, with light and essentially we can get a very, very concentrated growth and we, we obviously have to feed additional nutrients in. The environment outside, it can be, can be quite tough for them. Here they've got everything they need, light, warmth, the right sort of nutrients. What we will need to do is obviously scale up the laboratory system. So we'll, we'll, take, we'll have some device which would be a, a larger scale than the one we've got at the moment and we will take that and we will connect up to, to the factory's uh, flue gas emissions um, because that is probably the main source of CO2 and uh, just see how that goes so it will be done on a, a, essentially on a larger scale than what it was done in the laboratory. This is great news for the environment but it's also good news for industry as the government begins to tax them on the amount of CO2 they release into the atmosphere. So I'm on my way to cement manufacturer Semex to talk to their technical manager, Jeremy Archer, about how he believes algae may help them to reduce their CO2 emissions. We need to find a solution to our CO2, our carbon dioxide emission problem. We make cement, we manufacture CO2 while making that cement, so we need to find a way of reducing the amount that we ultimately make. CO2 is a greenhouse gas, it's warming up the atmosphere. We all have a, a part to play in reducing CO2 emissions. So uh, this is one of the ways in which CEMEX is seeking to reduce its CO2 emissions. We're going through an experimental program at the moment with CPI and our partner companies. 
looking at ways in which we can speed up the, the rate at which algae is produced and, and uh, also produce it in greater quantities. And uh, once we've completed that program in the laboratory, we'll then try it out in the plant to see if it works with plant flue gas. The flue gas, I'm not sure if you can see it behind me at the moment, coming from the exhaust in the, the plant is mainly water. That's the steam you can see. Uh, but there's also uh, a, a fairly high concentration of CO2, carbon dioxide, in there. And so we'll extract some of that flue gas. Uh, we'll feed that into the, into the water in which the algae is growing. That will increase the, the rate at which the algae grows. And the CO2 will be converted to um, carbon as part of the, the algae structure. But there's a catch. Algae don't actually make CO2 disappear. Once consumed, it's actually locked up inside the algae, sort of like a CO2 prison, and will be released when the algae dies. So is this really just a clever way to delay the CO2 from working its way into the atmosphere? I suppose the best, the best way to think about algae is to think about trees, in the, in the same way that uh, trees uh, transpire, they, they take in carbon dioxide. Trees are a known carbon dioxide sink. The carbon dioxide is locked away in the tree, or in the tree structure, until the wood is eventually burnt as a fuel. The same way that algae take in CO2 is locked away in their, locked away in their cell structure, and um, ultimately the, the, uh, the algae can be converted into a biomass, which can be burnt in the same way as wood can be burnt. Although when algae are burned as a fuel, they release the CO2 they initially capture from flue gas, this can then be utilised to grow a brand new batch of algae, keeping the carbon locked away in what's known as a closed loop. Not to mention, provide industry with an alternative energy source. We might use it to power the plant. We currently use a, a large range of different fuels to, to run the plant. We could also use it to ultimately perhaps to run our tankers. We have a large fleet of road tankers. So is algae a carbon superman or a bit of a damp squib? As a technology, it's, it's a very simple idea, really. The algae grow on CO2. You feed it CO2 in, into a, a nice nutrient solution with the algae. They take the CO2 up um, and release oxygen at the same time. So it doesn't come much simpler than that. I think within a decade, this will be a source of fuel for industries like ours. Uh, within a year, it won't be. It's far too expensive at the moment. The challenge is to make this technology work quicker and cheaper so that it becomes a, a widespread source of fuel. I think it's very viable, but not economic at the moment. Although algal technology may face barriers in implementation, and it might be some time before power stations and factories use it to capture their carbon and fuel their fires, if successful, the contribution it could make to the reduction in CO2 emissions could be great. At three billion years old, it seems that algae may yet again help us to breathe easy.